Hi, everyone, and welcome to Outside the Box. It is Friday. Yay. And uh, today we have uh, Brandon Keith back on the show again. So welcome back, Brandon Keith. Uh, he is uh, multi-talented, and you'll find out more about that in a minute. But before we get started today, we want to talk about, uh, did you make your bed? We talk about that a lot. Uh, we talk about making your bed as the first accomplishment of the day, but we don't talk so much about the end of the day. Early on, I talked about, it, you know, when you when you go to bed at night, you see the beds made and you've got that sense of accomplishment. But I think it's a really great idea and very important to reflect on that. So when you when it's time to go to bed and you see that bed made and you remember the sense of accomplishment and then also reflect on some other accomplishments for the day and then also maybe spend another 60 seconds thinking about what you were grateful for during the day as well before you go to sleep and then wake back up again, make that bed and go through that same process. You're starting your day like that and you're ending your day like that and soon you can build more and more of that 1% improvement into the middle of the day too. So uh, make sure you're making your bed. Brandon, are you making your bed yet? No. <laughs> All right. So uh, Brandon is I, security IT. I mean, he can what what all security IT? You know, I know I feel like every time I talk to you, you've gone through some other certification or course or something. But just give us a quick background on your security IT side of things. And then I want to talk about some of these other amazing talents you have. Sure. So I have a, a master's degree in cybersecurity and information assurance. I'm currently finishing up a master's in business administration. I have about six months left on that, specifically with a focus in IT management. And I work a so, lot. So what in, we're saying is you're really smart. <laughs> I, I try. And I have a lot of different industry certifications, but I do a lot of focus not just on IT, but also on leadership, business and communication. There's a big gap between the, the IT guys that are doing all the technical, brilliant things, and then the, the business people who have certain business needs and things they need to overcome with technology and communicating and understanding that gap and being able to communicate how this technology works and how it can improve an organization's business is critical. Absolutely. That's for sure. And there there is a uh, a lot of folks out there, maybe myself included over time that that think that uh, security IT guys is as amazingly intelligent as they are and what they do and how important it is in our daily lifestyles. And we just really don't even do any. We don't even think about it. We just go throughout the day knowing that you guys are all out there fighting crime for us, you know, right um, in, in a million different ways. But uh, I think a lot of us. Uh, underestimate the other capabilities of people in the field and that there are leaders like yourself in the community and leaders like yourself in uh, business itself and that you're multi-talented. And I just want to talk about that in a couple different ways today. First, I just want to let everybody know that uh, Brandon and I have known each other for a while now. Uh, and uh, as part of what we've been doing for Central Pennsylvania Support Small Business, he made me a little gift, and I just want to show you that gift. And Brandon, I you made this for me, but it took me this long to figure out how to show this to the world, and I might have to come back, <laughs> embarrassingly enough, and ask you how to do present this maybe every day when we start to show, but Brandon actually created something for me, and I'm going to try this because that means i gotta, I got to share my screen, folks, and we know how that might go, but... Um, I want to just show everybody just one small thing about what Brandon can do here. Let me see. Okay. Sharing now. See, even that takes me a while. Okay. And Brandon, can you, can you see? I can see it. You can see the video. Yep. Okay. Great. Great. So Brandon made this for me is it's really cool. And I'm just going to play it for everybody. Yeah, if that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what does. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's just one small thing that Brandon does, and it's pretty, pretty, absolutely pretty amazing to me. I'd love to start the show with that every day. So you're, you know, I'm going to have to ask for your advice on how to do that because I finally figured out how to just screen share it there. But um, 
one of the things that you have to do besides that is you have to go out and and you you do lives and you do broadcasts like this and you speak to the public uh, about all kinds of different things related to the fields that you're in. And uh, that's something that we're going to talk about today. You actually uh, are going to speak to us about tips for improved public speaking, correct? Absolutely. I have eight secrets that I've amassed over the last 12 years. And to give some context around that, growing up, I was not a very good public speaker. In fact, I had such bad speak anxiety and such a bad speech impediment. I had to take classes to be, to even be able to talk to people. Oh, wow. It's, I probably should have taken them before I started this, but I, I, I didn't have any time to do that. I'm the same way. I think we all are, too. We, we have to throw ourselves out there now more than ever in front of the camera. Video is taking over. And then you throw on top of that the space we're in right now with the stay at home economy and everyone having to communicate this way. I think it's just absolutely extremely important that we're able to do that. But I, I mean, I have anxiety too, I think we all, we all do. And when I started, you know, I, I, I still say I'm going to show everyone the first video when I'm when we're we're back to normal again because I think I said um 51 times in it, and those ums are because you're nervous about what you're going to say next. All right, all right, I said what I need to say, and hey, I did pretty good. Um, now what's next? You know what I mean? So you're pausing, so your brain moves. And uh, you're anyhow, you're going to give us some great tips to help on all of that today. But before we do, we got to tell the joke. Uh, and of course, I have it set up for speaking maybe a little bit today. This will be my first attempt at a knock knock joke, and I apologize. I purposely am surprising you with this. Uh, so, but it'll be fun. So, here goes knock knock. Who's there? A little old lady. A little old lady who? Oh, you are really multi talented. I didn't know you knew how to yodel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to let you take over now because obviously I've missed my boat here. <laughs> Uh, your, your jokes are getting better, Greg. Are they, you think? <laughs> I'm, right. I'm, I'm having some help with people sharing with me. I'm, I'm still putting out a plea to everyone. Please share with me more jokes. As you can see, I'm running out. <laughs> All right. If, am I able to share my screen here? I think, I think uh, there we go. All right. We're going to cover eight tips for improving your public speaking. Our agenda for today, we're going to cover why public speaking. Why is public speaking something that is important to you? I personally think it's important to everyone. It is no exaggeration that these tips could change your life. We're going to cover eight tips to improve your public speaking that you can put into effect today. And then we're going to talk about where do you go from here? How do you practice your public speaking? How do you get involved in live events? or go to conferences and do talks. So why public speaking? 74% of people suffer from some sort of speech anxiety. I know I do. Every time before I give a talk, I get a bit queasy, a little lightheaded. I tend not to eat before I give a speech because it won't make me feel very good and it will be difficult for me to actually deliver a speech. This is common for a lot of people. And it's something that public speaking can actually help you with. That way you're more confident, not only when you give public speeches, but just communicating in general. Public speaking can also increase your salary by over 10% on average. People that are better communicators and better at public speaking in the same field are earning 10% or sometimes even drastically more than their peers. Wow. So just improving this skill alone can improve your salary. It can build a lot of confidence. People say they love people who are confident. By improving your public speaking skills, you can become a lot more confident in yourself and the things you say. And be a master communicator. Have you ever struggled trying to find the right words to say? Practicing your speaking skills is a good way to overcome this issue. So what is my tip number one on how to start a presentation? What I normally like to do is start with a question. I started with why public speaking? It gets the audience to start to think about your presentation. There's a couple ways you can start a presentation and these are the three best ways I find. 
starting with a question, starting with a shocking statistic, like 74% of people have speech anxiety, or telling a story. Notice I did all three of these, and you can incorporate one or all three when you're doing a presentation. How I recommend not to start a presentation is, uh, my name is, is Brandon, I'm a, I'm a technical guy, I'm gonna talk about viruses today. It's, uh, how much time do I have? Yeah, I don't got a lot of time. You don't wanna start a speech that way because that is signaling to your audience, all right, this is going to be a talk or a presentation, I can catch up on my email. If it's online, it means that they're gonna skip your video and go to the next video. People have an attention span of normally less than 30 seconds. If you wanna attract your audience's attention, you wanna do something to grab their attention, a question, a statistic, an interesting story. And we all have interesting stories we can share, even if they're slightly exaggerated. Tip number two, you always wanna have an agenda. If you don't have an agenda, your audience is never going to know quite where you're at and they're not going to be prepared for the ending or even know if there is an ending. This can also trip you up if you're a speaker. You may not figure out when you're supposed to stop speaking. I've seen this in a couple conferences where it wasn't put together quite right. They didn't have an agenda and they went over on time because they didn't know where to stop and you begin to ramble. You want to have a plan in place for all the topics you're going to hit and specifically what you're going to cover. I'm it, definitely a rambler. <laughs> it helps you, it helps your audience. It's something that it takes a couple minutes to put together and think through it, but it will benefit you in the long run. Tip number three, know your audience. This may be one of the most important tips out of the bunch. You don't want to present an extremely technical presentation to a non-technical audience or a non-technical presentation to an extremely technical audience. This happens quite a bit in the technical field. And this is something I work with quite a bit where someone will try and present a lot of technical information to a non-technical audience. It goes over someone's head. You use a lot of fancy acronyms and your message never really comes across. What I recommend is figure out the specific audience members you're going to have and focus on that lowest common denominator. How can I make this make sense for all my audience members? Don't assume that they know all the terms you know. This can be really troubling because if you work in the medical field, if you work in the IT field or even the business field, we all have terms that we're used to hearing like ROI, return on investment or total cost of ownership. We may understand what those terms mean, but when we're speaking to other people, maybe even small business owners, there's some small business owners that may not know what those terms 100% mean. And that's okay because we can't all know everything, but know that when you're presenting, you wanna make sure you're explaining things in a way to get across to all your audience members. And demos or no demos, if you're showing a demo or if you're gonna have something to present, know that you don't have to have a PowerPoint to present before PowerPoints. You, people often did speeches and presented without anything. Your PowerPoint is a tool and you can use other tools in your demo. You can use live props or you can just talk without a slide deck at all. Know when it makes sense to use one and when it doesn't. Tip number four, less is more. You'll notice on a lot of these slides, they're not very text heavy. And there's an important reason for that. When you have a very text heavy slide, you're giving your audience two choices. They can either listen to you talk or they can read what's on the slide. They normally do not like trying to do both. And despite what many people think, people cannot actually multitask. This is why when you're designing your presentations, you want to make sure you have just enough to get your point across, maybe a powerful picture, a few words, and then you can elaborate on it. You don't want to have a text heavy slide unless there are specific points that's needed. Because at, at the end of the day, if everything you're saying is what's on the slide, why are you there? Most people can read. They can read your slide. They don't need you to narrate for them. 
Tip number five, I think you'll resonate with this one, Greg, is filler words, or as sometimes we call them, crutch words. The ums, the ahs, the sos, the ands, the wells, the buts, the you know, these all slip into our normal speech patterns. Unfortunately, <laughs> they don't sound very good when we say that. They do not. It can sound very bad. I've had speeches that when I'm helping doing coaching for someone who's learning speaking, they have a 10 minute speech and they spent two or three minutes saying ums and ahs. Imagine that if you counted all the ums and ahs for every speech, you find you're spending hours a year just saying um or ah. You don't need to do that. And here's some tips. You want to slow down. This is an area that I struggle with sometimes. You need to slow down, enunciate your words. It's okay to talk slower. No one's going to fault you for it. In fact, if you listen to movies or watch movies, watch it how slow the actors actually talk. They talk a lot slower than most people talk in conversation. This is because they're enunciating each word and making sure they're avoiding any of those filler words. Now it's okay to pause before speaking. If you're not sure what you're gonna say next, it's okay to just pause. Don't feel like you need to fill the air with an um or an ah. A slight pause is just fine. And sometimes it can be inspirational and even build anticipation. Know how to place your pauses and it will not only help you avoid crutch words and filler words, it'll make you a better speaker. No yeah, Brandon, I had a friend of mine that was like, dude, you have to pause before you give the punchline. You're just like reading the joke the whole way through. I was like, oh, that's a great point. Thank you. You know, sometimes you just don't even think about it. So I love this. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, it's absolutely a lot of thought and theory that goes into this. It's not overly complicated, but it's things we don't always think about. Know your points. To avoid filler words, you want to know what you're going to say. Have some kind of prep before you go through your presentation. If you don't know what you want to say, again, you'll resort back to what you know, which is rambling or maybe even small talk and practice, practice, practice. We'll emphasize this a little bit more. Now that's a lot, that's a couple different tips in one, but the key thing for number five is these are ways to avoid those filler words and practice to get rid of them. Number six, use self-talk. This one is very important. Many people have that irrational fear of public speaking. And it's estimated that more people fear public speaking than death. In order to overcome this, you wanna have positivity in how you do your talks. You want to build that confidence. Greg, before you started this live stream, I'm sure you were somewhat nervous about going live in front of a lot of people. Absolutely. Every time, still. The key to this is using positive thinking. Say it until it's true. Even if you have to lie to yourself a little bit, I'm going to go live and I'm going to do great. If you continue to tell yourself you hate public speaking, and you hate speaking in front of people, you're never going to do it. You want to be positive. That positive action will and thought process will lead to a better reality. I heard someone actually say that uh, before they speak, this is this is someone who speaks a lot, that they picture everyone lined up and and they're on a red carpet, right? And he's walking in, walking up to the stage and they're all cheering him on and everything. And, and he said that gets them all fired up and ready to go. <laughs> exactly. And it's those types of things that can help people overcome that anxiety. I still get anxiety every time. I give a speech. No matter how prepared I am, it just creeps in there. And it's something that you learn how to deal with. It's something that never 100% goes away, but it's part of being human and that's okay. No great public speaker, some of them may not feel that anymore, but 
most of them, I would say, probably still get nervous, even if they've done it a thousand times. Number seven. This might seem obvious, but you have to practice your speech. And when I say practice your speech, I mean record yourself giving the speech. Take notes. Learn what worked and what didn't work. The only way you can get better is if you know where you went wrong. That's how we improve in life. We figure out where our mistakes are and we improve for the next time. You want to practice your speech. If you can get people to listen in to a speech or practice a speech, and if you want to give a speech and send it to me, I will gladly give you feedback. That's an offer to anyone. If you're practicing a sales pitch and you say, Brandon, I just want to know what are some areas of my speech I can improve on? Send it over to me. I'd be glad to give some suggestions. The key thing is practicing because the more you practice and learn, the better your speech will get. And our final tip. It can be difficult to know when to end a speech. If you're not careful, you can just continue to go on. But like all good things, they must come to an end. How do you end a speech? Well, a good way to end a speech is always with a call to action. At the end of the day, you want your speech to motivate, inspire, and often call someone to do something. If it's a sales presentation, what's your call to action? You want someone to buy your product or service. You spent the entire speech convincing them why your service or feature or benefit is for them and why they need it. Don't miss out on that call to action to ask them to buy in a polite way, of course. You wanna also end with a quick summary. People have a short term memory and often by the end of your speech, they may not remember all the points that were hit from the beginning. Now, sometimes you can also close with a short story. Now, if you've done a story at the beginning and a story at the end, depending on how much time you have, that may not be the best thing, but it is a good way to end. And as I said, you wanna be inspirational or motivating. People are more apt to respond to those kind of speeches and endings. So what's our summary for today? Start a presentation with a question, story, or shocking statistic. Always have an agenda. Know your audience. Less is more. Avoid filler words. Use self-talk. Practice your speech. And then with a summary, call to action, and or a challenge. So what is my challenge to each and every one of you today? Join some kind of public speaking group. Even if it's an online support group, there's plenty of Facebook speech groups. There's Toastmasters International, which is more of a professional group. You can find a group to help with your public speaking, whether you're in sales, whether you give presentations for another reason, or you just want to be a better communicator. I encourage you to go out and find a group of people that can support you in your speech endeavors. Practice presenting today. I challenge everyone in the next two to three weeks, put together a small speech, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, and present it. Even if you're only presenting, recording yourself. And lastly, volunteer to present at a conference, a meetup, or a live stream. There's no better way to get experience than practice. Awesome, Brandon. Great presentation. Thank you. A reminder to everyone that these videos show up in your uh, group page. Left side column on the web, just scroll down and there's a video that you can select on and you'll see all the videos. You can also save these videos um, through, there's my arm, see, at least I'm catching myself now. You can, you can save these videos on your Facebook uh, feed uh, and we'll have them in the, in the, in the video thing that I already said that. So, uh, working on the summary, I'm like thinking as I'm talking right now, it's not working really well. I'm trying to pause, apply what I've learned. Pause. It's okay. <laughs> right. I think that's the biggest thing. If I'm being, if I'm being honest and listening to this is, is that I, and I'm sure there's many, cause a lot of us do it feel like I have to say something and not fill the space with awkward silence. 
And so the ums come out whether I want them to or not, you know. It's a natural reaction, and it's something that you can only overcome with practice. And I still say uhs and ums from time to time, but I do it a lot better with my pauses than I did before. And that's the key. We still have plenty of time to put this information to good work. So go to the video, look it up later. We're going to pin it to the top here for a while for everybody to look at so they can practice so that when we are on the other side of this, you are ready to get out in public and speak. And even before that, ready to speak live to people, uh, whether it's your Zoom conference, a sales call, whatever it might be, that you are ready to rock and roll when it comes to public speaking. Thank you very much, Brandon. Appreciate your time as always. Uh, join us tomorrow at noon when we welcome special guest Chrissy Kressler, mother of six and soon to be, I'm, I'm telling you, soon to be YouTube sensation of the crazy eight. Moms, you're definitely not going to want to miss this tomorrow when we talk with Chrissy and have an awesome kickoff to your Saturday afternoon. Till then, we'll see you all. We love you all. Have a great day.